Every door has a key. There's a key to every situation. Behind every unopened door, there is a mystery. And the opening of this door introduces us to another in the series, The Key. Try this one. Done in a second. No deception, ladies and gentlemen, just a trick. McGill's wonder lock, and it's as simple as any He won't thank you for breaking it. Danny, something tells me McGill is really after you this time. He has been ever since I opened that first mortis lock of his. Really after you? The full vengeance job. I think he'd kill you if he could. Cloda, I would him. In fact, I think we'll have a grand reckoning, the big showdown. Ruining his business isn't going to make him any friendlier. He started it. He's challenged me so often, I'm tired of it. I'll challenge him, and I'll wipe him off for good and all. The big grudge fight, no holds barred, and to the death. You joke. But will he? Danny, you've opened so many locks of his that there comes a time when he's got to remove you. Remove? You're a one-man act. He's a multiple business. You're an income, but he's an empire. He's big and self-made and ruthless. You find it amusing. He hasn't got a sense of humor. Give it up. All right. All right, Cloda, I'll give it up. I'll give it up after this one final death struggle. Escapologist or big tycoon, the little man or the monstrous cartel. Roll up, roll up and see the tussle of the century. Can the redoubtable Danny Cash escape from the new McGill lock, or will this contest end in his humiliation? Will he... Danny, Danny, don't joke about it. For once in my life, I'm scared. And if you're going to do it, don't waste time ranting and raving. Get on practicing. Yes, miss. Close. It's open. Close. It's open. Close. It's That's it. It's easier than a clasp on a necklace. Ugh. One week, McGill chews dust. McGill, the maker of putty locks. His locks may be putty, but he isn't. Has uh, anything happened, Danny? Happened? No, why should it? That burglar alarm? Oh, that. That was fixed. Well, you never know. Snoopers and spies and pale white things trying to find out more than they should. Clodagh, I may be lighthearted, but I'm not a fool. Aren't you? Houdini might have found the tank a little difficult, but there's no reason why I should. A bath. I must remember to have the water heated. Houdini nearly died. Danny, did you know I've been followed yesterday and today? The price you pay for being the wife of a celebrity. It wasn't that sort of following. It was the most unpleasant little man who, who glittered. His eyes glittered, and he wore a tie pin as big as a paperweight. Ah, Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. The watchdog, the spy, the guild scared. I must make the bet twenty thousand dollars. Thirty, forty. What's it matter? Make it fifty thousand. Danny, please don't. The signal. The pale little glittering man is on his way up. Glitter, glitter, little man. How I wonder who I am. Relax, dear. Take it easy. Leave it all to the luck of the Irish. A trap for the unwary. And who is so unwary as the trapper trapped? I call the tune, and you, my darling Clodagh, string along. First the door ajar. Not open so as to give suspicion, but not quite closed. The mess in everything. And now, my brother. Dear brother, do come in. My brother Danny. I reckon only a murder could stand between us. Brother Finnegan, you're so right. But, brother, we must be careful. We must advance with caution. We are beset by spies, glittering spies, spies like the morning dew after smog has passed by. But brother, what is all this? We've done a double act for years. Why should anyone find out now? Ah, uh, there is double dealing and treachery afoot. Big men, big men, if you get my meaning, would give a fortune to know that Danny Cash, the amazing, the incredible Danny Cash, does all his amazing feats of escape with the aid of a brother, a double, a twin, an identical spit. They are not safe, brother. Caution. The word is have a care and trust nobody. There, Clodagh, 
I would kiss that fair enough, but alas, you might not know I'm me and think I was the other. Brother. But have no fear. Our double treachery and treacherously doubling to fool the audience is a secret between us. If so small a thing as a secret could come between us, a secret. What is it? A whispered word. An endearment. A coziness engendered merely by knowing something others do not. Your lips are... Brother. Alas, who can blame me for wishing to taste a bitten apple? Twins are the same in love and need and want. My heart beats the so same rhythm, the exact music. And Blarney. Touché. A hit. A palpable hit. No more. Then again, we are here for business. Ah, enchanting business. Will you stop making love to my wife and listen to me? This is very important. McGill is really after us this time. No holds barred. And if he should find out that we pulled a gag on him and the public by switching, he'd... Well, he'd wipe us off the face of the earth. For 20 years, my dear brother Danny, we've gotten away with it. Well, I hope you're getting away with it this time. And I hope you know what you're doing. But, of course, enemy, jealous lover, brother, all in one. Danny's right. And you are too, Clodagh. We must be very careful this time. Caution. Forethought, track covering, and still more caution. Twin and identical brothers fooling the public. Oh, five. And, Finnegan, remember, if McGill should find out, it'll be more than five. It'll be as good as putting our necks in a noose. So, caution, care. Shh. Shh. I'll see you back safely to your hideout. Follow me. And see you in a week at the theater. Well, so much for that. And look at me, not in awe. Such cleverness comes to me naturally. Pride comes before a fall. How prettily you coin a phrase. And... Ah, our glittering friend has gone. Well, now we relax. And... Wait. Wait, dear Clodagh, for that phone. Ah, patience brings its own reward. Bet your dollar it's McGill. Hello? One dollar. Don't tell me, let me guess. Why, a voice like a rusty lock could only belong... Cash. Listen to me, Cash. One hundred thousand dollars on the outcome of a week tonight. My dear fellow, make it two, three, four, if you like. I'll tell you what, let's make it a round half million. You haven't got half a million. I soon will have. Let me see. All right, done. I'll give it to the papers. You've gone too far this time, Danny Cash. And talking of cash, we'll make it cash. Cash in the mail. Cash at the theater. You come to the theater with $500,000 in cash, cash. <laughs> uh, you're cash this time. <laughs> Goodbye. Rush in, sweet McGill. Rush in. Danny, you haven't got half a million. Oh. Apartment, the furniture, my insurance, and yours, the car, jewelry. Oh, I think we'll make half a million. You'll make it without me. I've made that jewelry by hard work, keeping you from spending it. And you haven't got any insurance. They wouldn't. And as for the car and the apartment, they're mine. You gave them to me. Honey, love or lamb, what we have is ours. Oh, it's no good, Danny. The dawn in the morning, I don't keep that from you. You sleep. The silver of the moon and the music we've shared... Clodagh, darling, this is me, your own husband, the light of your eyes after you. No. Honey, lamb, I've never asked you for anything. You know the world, the gold and the silver, and all I have is yours for the asking and my love. My love in my heart that overflows. Clodagh, darling, ask me and I'll snatch a star to put in your hair. I'll waft clouds around your shoulder and have the night to cloak you in midnight and make all... Why, hello there, Shane. Now fancy bumping into you when you were the last person in the world I was looking for. And how are you, Shane? Oh, not so well, Danny. It is hard enough for a poor old man to make a living without half the police following him. And them Irish, too. But what do you care for the police? A man who can open any safe in the world. I should have followed your bent. Getting people to see locks opened is a good deal better off than the one who opens them in secret and hopes to find the pay inside. Ah, how true, how true. Of course, should a man know, know there is no danger whatsoever, then maybe to open a safe would be a pleasure. It would be a glory. I happen to have heard that a certain McGill, that black-hearted key shopper, will not be in his office at about seven o'clock on a nice one week from this day. 
Is that so? Is that so? And Seamus, I happen to hear that should anybody open his safe one week from tonight, he would find a thousand dollars inside. Ah, me, what a pity. It is a great pity indeed. The McGill lock is one of the most intricate in the world. It defies all cracksmen and would not be worth the trouble for one thousand dollars. Oh, it would not be worth the trouble at all. Silly of me, you know, how I mention one thousand dollars when I really mean two. Danny, you moan to me. Then you hum. Would you not be after singing now? Two thousand five hundred, and that's my top note. And beautiful it is, true and sweet. Mr. McGill's safe, if it had not hinges, would be an uncorked bottle. This night in one week's time. Eh, about seven, you said? About seven. I'll be after going and getting a little practice. Sure, it's a formidable assignment to be opening Mr. McGill's personal safe. Good, Mansell, good. I'm sure, but Mr. McGill, I heard them both talking. Danny Cash is a four-flusher, a eh? double act. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't tumble to it before, though I had my suspicions. Of course, Mr. McGill. Switches. <laughs> so I wonder when he does it. Mansell, there's half a million dollars resting on this, and so much publicity, I can't let him win. Mansell, I'm not going to let him win. No, Mr. McGill. I want you to go to Danny Cash. Say to him, McGill's scared. Tell him I want to see him here in my office. Tell him I'm willing to call the whole thing off and give him a cash bonus into the bargain. Yes, Mr. McGill. Tell him to be here one week from tonight, five o'clock. And Mansell... I want to show you just how this tape of mine works. <laughs> I want you to study it well. It closes like this. More than dexterity, you need to beat McGill. His lock is punk, and he's beaten already. Clodagh, dear, every man has his price, and every man his pattern. McGill has kept more than one man quiet by a device you'd expect him to use. He'll beat you. So he will. But being beaten doesn't matter, so long as you win. And the loser of this little epic will lose the lock. An escapologist or a lockmaker, neither of us could stand up for the publicity blast, should he lose. Therefore, I'm not going to. If you lose, we won't have the clothes we stand up in. As good an excuse as any to go to bed. Now, don't you worry. Clodagh, love, tonight you'll be worth one million dollars. Goodbye, sweetheart. Where are you going? McGill, the great man, has spoken. He wants me at his office. What for? He says because he's scared and wants to pull out. I say because he's scared and wants me to pull out. Pull out? Put out. Like a candle. Nothing. Don't go, Danny. Stay. Don't go to McGill or the theater. In light of my love, I've got to. There's nothing so poor as a frightened man. Besides, I'd like to retire before anybody discovers how I do my escape. Now, don't you worry. You'll be at the theater at eight and watch your Danny live up to his name. See you later, sweetheart. Good evening to you, Mr. McGill. To you, Mr. Man. Sit down, Cash. I'll stand. A standing man has the quicker getaway. Cash, you're a dangerous man to me. The danger, if it can't be avoided, must be eliminated. A big business can't afford to be held a ransom by one man. Then pay me. Pay me and let me go. I'm not greedy. I'll take the 500000 you're going to lose tonight anyway. I sent for you because I know you are greedy. If you weren't, you wouldn't have come. And I also know you'll be scared after I tell you a few facts. <laughs> Yes, in a moment, Mansell. So, to get over your greed and the scare that's going to come to you, I'm willing to pay you $5,000. For that, all you have to do is announce that you're ill, that you can't go ahead with tonight's performance. And if I won't? Then I'll have to scare you. If it's your face you're thinking of, I've got used to it. Tell him, Mansell. Mr. Cash, you're a fraud. You do your escape act by using a double, your own brother. Identical twins, I believe. Somehow, during the performance, you switch so that one of you appears, appears to have escaped. I suppose the other removes his chains or padlock or whatever it is at his leisure. 
Unmasked? Quite so. So I think it's all perfectly plain. Either you take Mr. McGill's very generous offer, or you, or your brother, dies tonight. You couldn't do it. You couldn't be such fiends. The safety of the McGill commercial empire is far more important than a mere individual. But to let my brother die horribly, suspended head first in a tank of water, would be too inhuman, too ghastly. Even if the water is warmed. I don't think we need bother about all that cash. Take my offer and get out. No. No, I owe it to my public. The show must go on. Nonsense. Cash, you don't seem to realize the seriousness of my intentions. To uphold the McGill name, I warn you I don't mind what lengths I have to go to. Be wise, Mr. Cash. No. Sorry. I'm always ready to bargain with sensible people. But as you're not, then I have no alternative. Will you walk into my safe, or do Mansell and I have to carry you? No. No, not that. Please, Cash, no shouting. The staff have all gone, and beyond us three, there is nobody. All right. All right. You win. Oh, sorry, Cash. You've had your chance. I never go back once my mind is made up. The safe, please. Reconsider. Think. My wife. You should have thought of her before. The safe, please. I'll fight. You'll have to beat me first. Mansell. Can't I persuade you, Mr. Cash? As Mr. McGill says, once his mind is made up. Very well. But you haven't heard the last of this. Will I be able to breathe? It has been occupied before. The last man was still alive after 12 hours. We'll let you out after you fail to appear at the theater. I close the door, Mansell. Pleasure. I warn you, I can escape from anything. I can... I think we're being wise, Mr. McGill. After all, if his brother does go ahead and gets drowned... <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Would you if you were his brother? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, there's no danger. With him locked up, there's no danger to McGill Incorporated either. Come on. Mr. McGill. Mrs. Cash, I've come to warn you to call the whole thing off. One of the brothers, I don't know whether it's Danny or the other, won't be appearing tonight. If the other brother was so stupid as to go ahead, he'd most certainly die in that tank of water. Danny would never forgive me. If he were dead, he hardly could. I have half a million dollars to protect, and now I know Danny pulls the switcheroo, I'm going to protect it at any cost. Although, mind you, I've no objection to taking Danny's money. <laughs> With half a million, I could open a new branch. <laughs> and if you lost, you'd have to close more than an old branch. No, Mr. McGill. Danny wants to go ahead, and I'm not going to stop him. Very well, Mrs. Cash. I win. I only hope you don't lose a great deal more than cash. Good evening. Oh, come, come, my beauty. I'm treating you tenderly enough. Come now, open up. Oh, sure, and what do you want to be difficult for? Give up your secret. Be generous now. What oh, as gentle I've been, and as careful as you were a gardenia petal, and I... There, now. It wasn't so hard, was it? And a very good evening to you, Danny boy. And the same to you, Seamus. Very nice. Were you comfortable? A man can sleep here. It's quiet. And one place a wife... A wife could not get at him. Thank you, Seamus. You'll pardon me, but I have an important date at the theater. Of course. After a little matter of $3,000 has been settled. 2500 Seamus. Oh, yes. But what is 500 Nothing, Seamus. That's why you're not getting it. 100 2 Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I challenged Danny Cash that he could not open my latest lock. He, in fact, was so sure he could, he agreed to try while suspended headfirst in this, this glass tank submerged in water. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say Danny must have had a change of heart because he hasn't turned up. As you see, on this side, under guard is my half million saying Danny couldn't. On that side, his half million saying he could. <laughs> Shh, 
Well, as he hasn't turned up, under the rules of the county... What? What? Ladies and gentlemen, a slight delay, but nothing of importance. With your kind permission, I will now demonstrate just how ineffectual Mr. McGill's lock is. Where'd you get to, Danny? McGill's been making awful threats. Don't worry about that, darling. There's something else on my mind. What, dear? What is it? Has that water been heated? Wish me luck. Luck, luck, luck. Mrs. Cash. Mrs. Cash, he's not really going ahead with it. If he's not, he's putting up quite a show. But, but I, 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 I happen to know Mrs. Cash, his brother isn't here. He won't be able to switch. Uh, though how he was going to, I wouldn't know. But uh, Mrs. Cash, you, you, you've got to stop him. There'll be a terrible tragedy. Mr. McGill, when it comes to a million dollars, I don't interfere with anybody. And it'll be too late now, anyhow. Oh, dear. He'll never do it, never. He'll drown. Ten. Upside down in the glass tank. He hasn't got a chance, not a chance. He, he, he can't do it. Half a minute. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh. Done it. She's done it. Darling, I never thought you'd do it. Give me my dressing gown. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to die in there. Die? The water wasn't heated. Hello, my girl. Thought I couldn't do it, eh? That half a million of your money says I did. I get it. I get it. A frame. You're yourself. You never had a brother. Got out of the safe, eh? Came here. All right, you pulled a clever one. Let Mansell think you had a brother. Let him tell me and let me bet half a million. Oh, <laughs> clever, all right. Let me tell you, I'll fight you to the death, beyond if need be. Somehow, I'll get squared with you. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get you, Danny Cash. He will. He means it. Doesn't matter. From now on, I'm retired. Hey, get those guards around that million. Have a guard until the armored car comes to take it to the safe deposit. Come on, honey. Get changed and let's get out of here. I've never been so scared. Nor has McGill. He thought he'd murdered you. I wasn't too happy myself. If Seamus hadn't been a real master locksmith, it might have ended differently. A million. We always said we'd make a million, and we have. And don't try to make it two. No fear. It's Europe for us. An everlasting holiday. No more dressing rooms, no more escapes. We've really freed ourselves this time. Hello, Danny. Then again, get me out of these padlocks. McGill's made a good job, reckon the only way I'll get free is by a hacksaw. Whew, I only just made it. Another two minutes, and I'd have been too late to make the switch. Here, try Seamus's master key. Maybe that'll unlock these. Closing door finishes the story. Next week, another key will open another door to another story. Mystery. Romance. Or adventure. All start when a door is unlocked by... The key.